Hi everybody, welcome back to part three of the Special Hobby 132 scale Hawker Tempest build. Uh, well, you'll know from last time in part two, there was an awful lot of work to do to get the fuselage uh, sorted out. We made a start with the wheelbase and start to build the wings. And this time, as you can see, I've gone on to finish the wings off. I've detailed the wheelbase and I've got the nose assembled as well. And we've got a virtually complete airframe, except for the tail surfaces, which I'm going to have to do uh, next time. But again, it's been another uh, few days of cutting, fitting and uh, sorting out some of the uh, fit issues with the kit. There's plenty of them and uh, it's been quite time consuming. So, uh, But I know that uh, quite a few of you uh, are building the kit or have got it in your stash ready to build. Uh, so hopefully what comes now uh, will help you out. So we'll get straight over to the bench and wish me luck. So let's pick this up again and I'm going to start this week by just cleaning the fuselage up. This has had three days to cure and if you saw the last video you'll know that this took quite a bit of clamping to get it to go together, particularly here on the nose section. You saw the last video, I was worried about a little bit of a step in this uh, join here. And I really trussed it up with some burner clamps, but even so I've still got a little bit of a mismatch between the two fuselage halves at this point. Quite a lot of these joints are going to need some treatment with Mr. Surfacer. This is the grade 500. And obviously because of the amount of sanding that I'm doing here, we're going to have to rescribe and reinstate the rivets. But we'll just need to get the joints smoothed out first of all. You can probably see how poor the fuselage join here is at this point and uh, it's going to take two maybe three applications of the uh, Mr Surfacer to get a nice clean joint on the uh, fuselage. So it's just a case of patience and repeating the process until you eliminate uh, any trace of a seam. But I've got to wait for that Mr. Servicer to dry. So in the meantime, I'll go over to the nose and prepare it by cutting off the upper panels that we don't need because we're fitting the engine into this. So the first step is just to deepen the panel line where I want the brake to be. That'll help us get a nice clean cut. And I'll do the rest with the motor tool. So I'm just test fitting the radiator face into the nose and it is possible just to get it in with the nose joined. It's a bit of a push but you can just do it and I'd like to be able to do that because there's a lot of work to do with this piece. This goes on the upper part of the intake but it's an absolutely awful fit. It hardly goes in at all. So it's going to need a lot of work to get it smoothed in. And I'm not going to be able to do that with the radiator in position. So I'm going to have to do it like this. 
I'll just make sure that this rear part of the radiator goes in as well. And that's going to be okay. That's not a problem. So, so uh, the approach I'm going to take then is to glue the two halves of the nose together and then try to get a best fit as I can with this intake part, this upper intake part. I'll put the radiators in later on, but uh, I'm also going to have to do some more work on this to get the engine to fit. This is the main resin engine block. And that sits inside something like that. So again, we've got a lot of work to do to get that to fit. So we'll get this nose cleaned up, glued together, taped up and set it aside again for at least a day to, to thoroughly dry. There's still a way to go with this, so second coat of Mr. Surface are on. So we'll get there eventually, it's uh, just a case of persevering, being patient with it. And eventually you'll get rid of all those nasty joints. Again, leave that to dry. So back to the uh, wings now and these undercarriage bays. I've detailed the port bay with some copper wire and some lead wire. And uh, I'll do the starboard one now. And for this I've used a couple of reference photographs uh, from the internet. It's actually from the build that I mentioned in the previous episode over on large scale planes. A couple of nice reference photographs. And uh, I'm going to attempt to replicate as best as I can. It's going to be a bit of an approximation, really. But uh, I'll get as much of this in as possible. I'll basically now just copy what I've done on the port side over on the starboard. So I'll start off getting these two big copper pipes in, which run all the way around three sides of the undercarriage bay. Just checking that I'm using the correct gauge. I've uh, forgotten them for a moment. Uh, what I used. And my first gaff really with these undercarriage bay, which I mentioned last time, was that I really should have done the assembly onto the upper wing panel. It would have been much easier to lay all this pipe work because most of it sits uh, on the upper part of the wing. The other mistake that I made was not to drill the bulkheads out before I actually fitted them. It's much harder to do that now. It is possible, but it's just a bit more awkward. And you run the risk of the drill chuck damaging surrounding detail. So if I were doing this again, I'd drill out all the bulkheads beforehand.
the easy bits doing the first one uh, the second one you've got to get it to match which is a little bit more tricky When you're using lead wire, you just need to be a little bit careful using tweezers because it can crush the uh, lead and misshape it. So if you use a cocktail stick just to shape the curves in it and handle it very gently with the tweezers. Okay, so I think that'll do. There's enough in there to make it look uh, busy. As I said, it's probably not 100% accurate, but uh, it gives the impression. Most of these pipes here on the forward bulkhead run to the retraction jack, which is this piece here. So uh, that should look all right. So the next step is to give these undercarriage bays a coat of black primer, followed by some of the interior green. Just a bit of dry brushing now to bring the highlights out. So the next step for these is a coat of flat varnish. Uh, that's because sometimes the dry brushing stage tends to polish the parts a little bit. So a coat of flat coat will just settle everything back again. Okay, let's get the wing panels together now.
Okay, so again, we're all trussed up. I've actually just gone back with a little bit of the flat varnish because, because I use this super thin CA to seal some of the joints. I got one or two shiny bits of glue on the inside, but a coat of matte varnish again sorts that out. So I'll go back to the fuselage now, get the seams tested and primed, and then we're going to take a look at the nose, see if there's anything we can do with that. Okay, so uh, Mr. Surface are 1500, and we're nearly there with it. It just needs another uh, rub down and another prime. And it's worse here at the front of the rear fuselage, where there's a little bit of a step. So that's going to need quite a bit more work. But everywhere else, it's starting to come together all right. And I've primed the bulkhead as well, just to make sure that that's uh, nicely fed in which it is, so uh, it's starting to come together. Just give it another quick sand down. So at this stage, I'm just using some Tamiya sanding pad. This is 2000 grade and it's glued just to a coffee stirrer. So it makes a really uh, cheap and effective sanding stick. But because it's firm, it doesn't leave a flat on this curved surface. The rear deck is just about there now, don't need to do much more with this. I'm not going to worry too much about this forward area because we've got to fit the wing obviously and the fit here of the wing to this rear fuselage isn't great, so we're going to need to do quite a bit more work at this forward end. I can still feel that, so it's not going to be right just yet. It needs quite a bit more taking off. I'll use a bit of water with this so it doesn't scratch too much. Just see what that looks like. So uh, I think I've caught it now. So that took three applications of Mr. Finishing Surfacer and a fine sand down with this sponge in between just to just to eliminate that seam. I'll find the panel line again just to make sure that I don't lose it under the primer. Okay, so that's uh, all okay. The seams are good. I'll just have to do a little bit of work to reinstate some of the rivets. And the moulding on the kit is a little bit weak in places, so some of the rivets uh, just need strengthening a little bit. Just to make them a bit more consistent across the airframe. But uh, that's good so far. So we're uh, just coming back to the nose. Uh, you remember that I mentioned that this piece here, this upper intake ring, is a pretty poor fit. I've managed to get it in, and the way I did it was to use CA to glue it onto one side in its correct position, uh, use some accelerator to make sure that it's completely bonded, and then push the other side into position and did the same CA and accelerator. Then any little gaps which there were up here at the top, I've filmed that in with CA as well. So it's going to need a little bit of clean up, but in the end it didn't go in too badly. And again, this is another piece that's going to need some uh, filler on it. Okay, let's uh, do a little bit more on this nose. So I've added here a piece of styrene 
onto the inside. This is 0.75 millimeter styrene. And what that's doing is it's just closing the circumference up a little bit of this intake because measuring off on plans, it's two millimeters too wide, which scales out at about three to four inches, something like that. So it's not much, but I'm hoping that this will just improve the look of the intake a little bit. Doing the Barracuda replacement, of course, would correct that. That's the correct shape. But uh, as I explained, I'm not going to be doing that because of fitting the engine into the uh, nose here. So this is the next uh, best thing, I think. If you want to do it at all, some people will be quite happy with the size of the intake as it is in the kit. The uh, difficulty with adding this is that you've got to reshape and fill in the inlet behind this styrene and in doing that you lose some of the detail that's present in the kit but I'll reproduce that you can see these little holes and rings and uh, bits of uh, squares and so on which I can replicate with bits of photo etch and styrene once we've got the actual shape corrected. So in gluing this ring in here to close this gap up to pinch it in a little bit it is quite tricky to do with styrene because if you flex it like this and then apply Tamiya Extra Thin for example the glue will find any cracks that you've formed and it just disintegrates so uh, CA doesn't do that and it makes a strong bond as well because we're going to do a lot of filling and filing on this so the next step is to pad this out behind to reinstate the shape. And when I'm moulding that shape on the inlet, I still want it to meet the radiator at the back. So basically the putty's got to peter out, if you like, by the time it reaches the radiator face. So uh, I'll get some putty out, let's fill it in and see if we can improve this a little bit. This will need several applications probably to get it all smooth. Once this is filled and it's drying, the next thing I'll do is to uh, sort out the fit of the engine into the cowling. And although I'm not going to fit the engine in this video, I want to get it to the point where it will just drop into the airframe. So I know it looks a dog's breakfast at the moment, but um, it will get better. So uh, let's not look at that too much at the moment. We'll. Uh, Sort this engine out. Now we've got one solid block of resin here for the engine. There's lots of ancillary parts to put on it. I just want to get the basic fit of this block into the nacelle. So what that involves, obviously you've got to cut the casting block off the bottom which I've done with the motor tool and a cutting disc. And the other fit that you've got to find is at the front here. So this is the coolant tank and we've got a piece of the frame which holds the cowlings in place here. That frame has to be flush with the front here. So like that. So you get a continuous flat face. And obviously the spinner goes on the front. The correct height for this is when you line up the exhaust manifolds here with the top of the opening in the cowling at this point and it needs to be level obviously the trimming that i've had to do is here so i've just uh, chamfered this edge 
so that it fits into the curvature at the front of the cowling here. And I've leveled this part of the resin off as well so that that sits nicely on the plastic like that. Also what we want to do is to thin out the top edge of these cowlings so that they appear to be a scale thickness and I'm just doing that by chamfering the top till you get that nice wafer of uh, plastic at the top of the cowling there. Okay, all the edges thinned out now. So that's a nice scale effect on this side cowling. So actually the fit of this will be quite good I think when we get to it. It's nice and straight anyway and uh, I want to be able to glue that into position once I've got the wings on and be able to put the engine on separately because I want to add some of the detail to this engine whilst it's in this form and then just drop it in from the top. But that will be quite difficult to do because it's got a tendency just to fall down. So what I want to do now is put some supports on the inside of this uh, nose piece which will hold the engine in the correct position. So we'll get it all lined up and then I'll just add one or two little bits of styrene onto the underside to give it a ledge just to sit on. So while I'm waiting for the cowling to dry, I'll uh, do a little bit more work on these wings. They've hardened up now from uh, gluing them all together. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to sort out the openings for the cannon barrels. Because on the kit, when you glue the wing house together, they don't align exactly. You certainly don't get a perfect circle and we've got some resin barrels to fit into these. This uh, late mark of Tempest had short barrels. It didn't have the long barrel fairings uh, of earlier marks. So what I've done to get a better look for the openings is to put some styrene tube in and then just sand it to, to the profile of the front of the wing. So I've got to do these two on the starboard side. So this is the styrene tube which is slightly bigger than the opening in the kit. So I've just got to cut these until we can slide the styrene tube in. Get these uh, leading edge inserts fitted now 
and uh, these are like this because some versions of the kit have uh, leading edge radiators in them asymmetrical so these are for the mark 5 I had heard bad reports about the fit of these parts, but they don't appear too bad. They're going to need sanding, but really they're pretty good. So this one, not so good. So the fuselage and nose still fits, so that's uh, a bit of a relief. We'll leave these to set, we're going to need to obviously do some work on these. There's a bit of an oddity here on the tip of the port wing, we've got a hole for uh, what I presume is a pitot tube, but there isn't one present on this particular version. If there ever was one, I'm not sure, but uh, that needs filling. Now there is an issue here with the panel lines as they go around the leading edge because they don't line up with the equivalent panel line underneath. But you can't just do the panel line because we've got a rows of rivets on either side as well so the rivets will need reinstating. But uh, that mismatch uh, isn't something personally that uh, I like to see. So I'm going to fix it. This mismatch might be uh, a building error. I may have got one panel slightly offset from the other rather than uh, blaming the kit all the time. Take a look at this uh, starboard side, it's not as bad. So we'll get the panel lines back now. I've done all along this inboard side. I've got uh, just a couple more to do. So I've got some stiff tape. This is what we call Dymo tape. I think it's got other names in other parts of the world. So this just enables us to keep a straight edge on the scribe.
I'm just running over all the panel lines now just to make sure that they're all of a similar sort of gauge if you like. The moulding on this wing is a bit hit and miss in places so it means that the panel lines can be a little bit inconsistent. But I think that's okay, that'll pass now. So with the uh, panel lines all sorted, I'm now going around the wing panels with this riveting tool. It's part of a set. I've got four different sizes of these. And what I'm trying to do is just to make sure that there are no missing rivets in a line of rivets. And I'm also trying to get them to a sort of consistent appearance the moulding on the kit tends to have the rivets run out in certain places so I want to reinstate those. Where you've got rivets present but they're faint you can just feel the initial indentation and once you do you just press down a little bit not too much you don't want to overdo these. So I'll carry on and hopefully once this is done and I'm happy with the wing panels uh, we can then uh, get this fitted to the fuselage. So now I need to uh, reinstate the rows of rivets on either side of the panel line here. The one that I've rescribed and matched up with the leading edge. So I'm just going to do this by eye. Fortunately it's on the underside so it's not quite as important as getting it right on the top. Just using this Tamiya wash to highlight the rivets and panel lines just to make sure that I've captured them all. This will show up much better than the eye if you have missed anything. Okay, that's just about ready to fit uh, except for one last job which is uh, you'll notice that on this starboard aileron we've got this trim tab we haven't on the port side and yet there's a engraving on the underside of the wing for the trim tab so for some reason special hobby have just missed off the trim tab on the top part of the aileron. So I'm just going to mark where it is. And just before I fit the wings I just want to paint this area here 
because the cockpit floor is open and you can just see a little bit of this uh, looking down into the cockpit if you're very careful to look. So uh, I'm just going to give this a quick squirt with some of the Mr Hobby interior green. One last check, should be all right. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, all that test fitting has paid dividends. And that's a nice join. The wing fillet is standing slightly proud, but I'm not too bothered about that because they did stand proud in reality. They were fixed onto the top of the wing panels and secondly the uh, black walkway goes right next to the join so it tends to disguise the wing root join a little bit actually that CA has closed it up so that's all right So I'm just coming back to this nose and the intake and uh, the putty that I applied has dried so I'll start to clean that up see if we can get the shape back into it. So I'm going to reinstate those details that I sanded off earlier on on the top part of this intake and this is an old photo etch fret from my 1200 scale uh, hood the Pontos set and there's all sorts of handy little rings and bits and pieces of brass that you can use. Okay, so that's uh, all good. That's the detail back. Uh, I've also rescribed the panel lines on the underneath. This underneath of the cowling needed quite a lot of sanding. So I've done the panel lines again and uh, added the rivet lines. So that's ready to accept the radiators. So uh, with that all ready, I can give this uh, the first coat of paint, which will be to do the inlet and the exit ramp, which is this in the medium sea grey, which is the underside colour for the aircraft. 
These are the radiator faces and I just want to dry brush them very lightly with some Tamiya lacquer flat aluminium and that just brings out the really nice mesh detail or grill detail on these parts. But the key is to be very gentle with it. Really just want to highlight the mesh and nothing else. These have been primed with some Tamiya lacquer flat black and the overall effect that you get at the end is of a sort of metallic grey colour really. There's barely any of the aluminium on this brush. These aren't the completed radiators, there's some other parts to fit to them, but I'll do that later on in the build. Probably when we come to uh, do the engine. So I've managed to get everything in, the radiators and the ramp. The front end looks nice with the uh, reprofiled intake. Uh, the key now is to see if this will fit onto the fuselage. So we'll just have one panel left which goes here on the underside. So uh, this is the panel and uh, I had a fit problem here as well because as it turns out these two inserts that I fitted earlier on are too wide so it closed this gap up this part was too wide to go in and it was also preventing the nose piece to go in properly so uh, I've had to trim those two panels back a little bit and now that slides in I'll just check it against the nose so there's a way to go yet you can see that there's just a little gap it's probably just over a millimeter that needs removing the front of the fillets just stand a little bit proud so I just want to take a little bit of material off these. Less than half a millimetre and we should be okay at that point. So you're not getting a great view of this, but I need to see what I'm doing myself. So I'm looking to fit this nose uh, one side at a time and I'll reinforce it as I go along. Now the important join is this one here at the back of the engine cowling and this one along the upper wing root fillet. I'm less concerned about what it looks like underneath. So as the adage goes it fits where it touches but it's touching enough for me to be able to get a bond on it. So what I'll do now is reinforce this join here along the bottom with some styrene 
and also I'll put a little fillet on the inside here to hold uh, these side panels in place against the main fuselage. Okay, so after a massive struggle, that's uh, gone together, it's okay. And uh, what I wanted to be able to do is this, which is just uh, drop the engine in from the top. Just need to wiggle it around a little bit. Like that. And that means that I can paint the airframe, paint the uh, engine bay, and probably I'll do the engine separately, paint it separately, do all the uh, ancillaries on it and just drop it in towards the end of the build really. So uh, that's been a bit of a struggle this week as you've seen but uh, it's starting to come together and uh, once all the cleanup's been done I'm sure it'll make a really nice model, some lovely surface detail on it and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to get on with it uh, next time. So next time what I'm going to do is uh, do the tail surfaces, which I haven't had time to do this week. I need to do some work to clean up this uh, fuselage to nose join, although it's not too bad. And then I want to get it to the stage where I can prime this airframe ready for some painting. So uh, that will be coming up. Uh, next week sometime. I have some work to do on the Bismarck uh, which I'll pick up again uh, for next Friday. But uh, Maybe I'll do a short video on this uh, to show you the clean up and fitting those tail surfaces. We'll have to see how it goes. So uh, thanks for persevering with this one. It's been a bit of a struggle this week to get that to where it is but I hope it's been of help to everybody that's building the model or you contemplate it you've got them in your stash I know that quite a few of you uh, that applies to and some of you have got the Mark II I think which will save you the trouble of uh, all the work around the engine because it's a completely different nose but uh, even that one I expect would be a tough kit so as I said I hope the video helps you and uh, I'll see you next time everybody in the meantime look after yourselves bye for now Thank <laughs> you.